I hope you're well. I've set up in the dining room today to do my beetroot sewing because it's raining outside yet again. I haven't set up my um, growing station in the greenhouse yet, so we have to do, deal with the dining room. Um, but I just want to talk to you first of all, and I'm going to change this chair because it is a little bit squeaky, isn't it? Let's change it to this one. Let's hope it's not a squeaky. Um, I want to talk to you about beetroot and why... That's a bit squeaky too, but it doesn't matter. Why do I grow beetroot? Why do I like beetroot so much? Look, if I were to choose just one vegetable to grow, it probably would be beetroot because I do find it's so easy to grow and it is so versatile as well. It's hardly got any pests whatsoever. It looks really great in flower beds and flower borders as well. And you can start eating the leaves when they're small and then you can eat the roots. So you're actually eating the whole plant. I mean, what better plant is there than that to eat? Um, it stores really well, as you saw yesterday in my video of my, the way I store my um, roots. It grows okay in containers. It doesn't need a lot of water and it tolerates some light shade as well. Fantastic plant. It, being in the same family as chard, it, the leaves are really, really healthy for you. And then as a bonus, you eat the roots. So when I choose whether I'm gonna grow a veg, I kind of use a rating system, and this rating system helps me decide if I'm gonna grow something or if I'm not. There's actually quite a lot of things that I consider, but the main things that I consider are, the first, number one thing that I consider is, is it tasty? That's the first thing. The second thing is, is it expensive to buy, like lettuce? That's expensive to buy. Um, the next thing that I talk about is, does, are you going to get a big harvest for it? Are you, or are you going to get a piddly little harvest from it? Um, when is its harvest? Am I going to grow veg that is going to be all harvested one time? No, I don't. I want to harvest over a long period of time. Can I buy it organically? And if I can't, how much is sprayed on these plants by commercial growers? They're mainly the things that I choose for my rating system. And beetroot rates quite high for me. I mean, it's never going to compare to say strawberries or peas for taste, but it is so versatile, it's definitely worth it for me. Um, a lot of people don't actually like the earthiness of the red varieties, but if you grow a golden one, like the ones I'm gonna to grow today, these golden burpees and give them to people, most of the time they change their mind. It, they are so tender and sweet and they're really good alternative for carrots, I find, especially in the spring, because they are just so delicious. Um, beetroot is really, really healthy. The leaves in particular are really, really healthy. Um, but of course the roots are great as well, <laughs> as well. The only concern is um, if because uh, the leaves are very similar to spinach and chard, they're quite high in oxalic acid. So if you've got kidney stones or kidney problems, any like, anything like that, make sure that if you're gonna eat the leaves, eat them in moderation. You know, um, beetroot, it's really cheap to buy, isn't it? Um, but it, you never, when you buy beetroot, you always get the roots, don't you? You never get these great quality leaves and the leaves are absolutely delicious. So that's yet another reason why I think it's definitely worth growing in my, in my opinion. It's for me, it's a winter superstar, beetroot is. They, I mean, they keep fairly well in the ground over winter if you get a mild winter. But like I said yesterday when I was doing my, um, uh, storing my roots. I lost my beetroot two years in a row, so I don't bother doing that anymore. And because they store so well, you'll find that um, I, we're often eating our fresh beetroot, even when the store stuff is still finishing. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a winner for me. They can grow in so many different environments. They can grow in containers, but of course, like anything that grows in, in, in a container, it's better growing it in the ground. If you are gonna grow it in a container, B2 
Beetroot has a very long tap root, so um, you'll probably need something that it's, is at least 12 inches in diameter, and but at the same depth as well. You know, like I said, it tolerates light shade. Um, I try, when I do my kind of spring summer sowings, uh, beetroot and my later beetroot as well, I try to give them as much light as possible where I sight it in the garden. But my kind of main crop beetroot, it doesn't really matter, it can go into light shade and it works just as, just as well for me. And you know, in ideal conditions, beetroot should, go to seed. So if you've got beetroot planted in spring or summer, it should go to seed the following year. But of course, like all vegetables, if they're stressed because it's too cold or it's too dry or it's too wet or you planted it too early, um, they will go to seed as well. The great thing about beetroot though is when it does go to seed, it doesn't actually make any difference to the taste of the beetroot. All it does is put more energy into producing a flower than the root. Sometimes it goes a little bit woody, but most of these varieties that I grow, they usually don't actually. Um, so you just got to get a diversion of energy into the flower rather than the root. Um, it is, look, it is, you can grow beetroot in, in autumn if you want, if you really want an early spring um, crop. But I have found that if I do that, if I start sowing kind of August, September, I've got a much more likelihood for the stuff to bolt. So, and go to seed um, in springtime. And, um, but you probably, you might get a nice leaf harvest of it. Of it. So, you know, that's worth it. Um, and I then think to myself, yeah, but you know, I'm gonna store my beetroot. So my, if I harvest all of my main crop beetroot in autumn, and then store it until May, there really is no need to get a really extra early crop. So, you know, for me, that's fine. And I, you know, the other thing that they talk about with beetroot is it being woody. Okay, so all these websites and all these books say, don't they, that you should be harvesting beetroot when they're smaller than a tennis ball, otherwise they're gonna be tough or they're gonna be woody. I've never found that at all, definitely not. It's to do with varieties, but for me, a woody root is something that has been in the ground a long time, not because um, it's the size of it. It's to do with how long you've had it in the ground. So you're better off actually eating a bigger root that's been in the ground for say three months than a root that's been in there from February till July and it's a small root because that is definitely gonna be woody. Okay. I divide my crops into first earlies, second earlies and main crop, no matter what crop I actually grow. And it's just an easy um, system for me to know when I'm sowing and when I'm gonna be getting the crops. So most of the time, the first early crops, which are the ones that, be, that I'm doing today, are usually ready kind of May, early June. And for beetroot, that is the time when my stored beetroot should really be finished and then this takes over. It also is the time when chard has a tendency to bolt and go to seed. So you're gonna have these lovely chard-like leaves from beetroot. That's my kind of fathoming behind this. Um, and also because the light levels in springtime, uh, early spring, and also the nutrients in the soil are not good to put seedlings in or to put seeds in because of the cold, I find it's best to sow in modules. And so now I'm getting to the sowing part. Um, I'm going to start with the Burpees Golden. This is one of my favorite, favorite beetroots uh, because I've got more seeds in here. I have to go and get some more seeds there. And what I do is, I am gonna sow all of these. I have got, and let me work it out, about 40, 40 cells here. And I sow, let's just do it while we're doing it. I sow two seeds per cell. And we're just gonna do it as I talk to you about it. So I've just popped the seeds on top two seeds per cell, and then I'm gonna thin these 
to a maximum of about oops, two to three plants at this time of year. Spring time of year, early spring is the best, um, not uh, like my main crop where I might actually have more seedlings per cell. So I'm gonna um, thin them to about, I would say about three seedlings. So beetroot seeds, let's see, can you see that? A beetroot seed is actually a cluster of seeds. So just because I'm sowing two seeds doesn't mean that I will get two seedlings because from one seed, you might actually get up to, well, two or maybe even three seedlings. So from two seeds here, I'll, I might even get up to five, five seedlings. That's how beetroot works. So this is how quick it is doing this. Um, then I'm going to germinate these here in the house because you kind of ideally want the environment to be about 18 degrees um, Celsius. And my greenhouse is way too cold for that at the moment. So, um, let me just continue doing this. If you've got um, if you've got a heated mat, you can put them on a heated mat. Or if you've just got a nice warm room, they'll germinate. Don't worry, they will definitely germinate. Um, once they have germinated, uh, then you want to change the environment. So they then want to be in a bright, cool position. That's the next stage. Let me just do this. We're nearly there with these. Um, so they like cool but bright conditions. So I will probably bring them up here in the dining room because I've got to te check the temperature in this dining room. Oops, I've got the wrong packet. <laughs> got the wrong packet. And once the seedlings start growing and coming up properly, they need maximum light levels. That's the most important thing for beetroot seedlings and let them grow away. I then, when they're ready to go out, I then plant these first earlies in my greenhouse, or I've got a little polytunnel over the allotment. So they go into the greenhouse or the polytunnel because I need them to get on and um, grow at these ideal temperatures. They also benefit from the warmth of the greenhouse. Now, if you don't have a greenhouse or anywhere under cover, that will, will make yourself a little kind of like a polytunnel cloche thing as well. They're pretty easy things to make. And if you don't have this, then you might want to skip this first early sowing and start with me when I do my second early sowing, which is in March. So if you don't want to have to um, put these under, under cover, and that is the main thing about these, these beetroots is that these are going to go undercover. Um, then you might want to wait until March and I will do another sewing then because that's my second early sewing. Uh, look at that. Done. That's all done. Burpees golden. Wonderful. So um, then I do, I'm very scientific with the way that I plant seeds, as I've mentioned to you before. Um, I don't worry about the seed depth being one and a half or two and a half, or I don't know what it is, times the seed. I just put them in about a centimetre to two centimetres deep. I don't go too shallow because if you go too shallow, you're going to find that you're going to get very leggy, very floppy um, seedlings, and I definitely don't want those. So here we are. I'm just kind of 
doing it with my finger. And this compost has been pre-wet already. So, oh, that one only had one in it. That's the beauty of doing it and leaving them on the top like that. Uh, yeah, so this has been pre-wet and these should come along beautifully. Um, I'm gonna put them underneath, like I said, I'm gonna put them underneath my lights downstairs. So downstairs, um, I've shown you already, I've got grow tents downstairs and the only reason they're downstairs is because <laughs> they got kicked out of the dining room. Mr. N kicked me out of the dining room with my grow tents. Um, so they're downstairs and that is where I germinate everything. Everything I need germinated either goes underneath lights because I've got lights in these grow tents or I also have heated mats in there. And as soon as they germinate, they either go straight out to the greenhouse or they come here into my um, south facing window. And I've started my setup here as well. So that's that. That is why I grow beetroot.